Whenever you travel, it's important to travel safely, being sure to wear your seatbelt, and driving cars equipped with airbags. But have you ever thought about the safety issues astronauts face when they leave home? There may not be much traffic in space, but there are certainly lots of harsh conditions. What safety gear protects astronauts in space? Well, you're going to find out next on Real World. One of the most dangerous times for an astronaut is re-entry to Earth's atmosphere. Most recently, we've watched the shuttle return home and re-enter our atmosphere. Anytime you, you have a spacecraft that goes into outer space, one of the major design challenges that you have is how to protect the vehicle when it comes back outer space and re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Robbie Kearns manages NASA Langley Research Center's space operations. So the material that was on the bottom of, say, the Apollo spacecraft uh, actually burned off as the vehicle re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. This process is known as ablation. And there was enough on it to protect it throughout the peak heating times, which allowed it to protect the spacecraft until it you know, splashed down in the ocean. The Apollo spacecraft was designed to be used only once. Today's shuttles are designed to travel to space over and over again for as many as 100 missions. Re-entry is still an issue for the shuttle. The same extreme conditions of space still affect this craft. So how did the NASA engineers solve the problem this time? They turned to a substance that exists in the most extreme conditions on Earth, sand. The desert gets incredibly hot during the day, but at night it can get downright frigid. And the sand handles those changes with no problem at all. Those temperature variances are nothing when compared to the tough conditions astronauts face when traveling from the harsh cold of space to the hot friction of re-entering our atmosphere. When the shuttle's in space and passes through Earth's shadow, the temperatures can be as low as minus 157 degrees Celsius. That's minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And when the shuttle re-enters Earth's atmosphere, the friction can cause those temperatures to soar as high as 1,650 degrees Celsius. That's 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. When the orbiter re-enters, it, it re-enters at a very steep angle. As the flow comes up, it wants to come up and then go over. And that, that turbulence and that velocity of the air that moves over creates a tremendous heat zone. Back to the sand. So, how does sand fit into this equation? The tiles really are a unique piece of engineering. They're very lightweight, and what people really don't realize is, is that they're just sand. They're made of quartz sand, and it's uh, bonded together in such a way that it's, the, the sand is spaced apart within the structure, and it's, it's very, very lightweight. That's right. The tiles that cover the shuttle surface and protect it from extreme temperatures are made mostly of sand. And just think about how many of these tiles are needed to cover the shuttle. Now there are about 31, 32,000 different tiles on the orbiters. Uh, each one is specifically designed and sized to fit a specific location. It's like a giant puzzle. Each piece must fit precisely into the ones beside it. And with the irregular shape of the shuttle, that's no easy equation to figure out. So what's next for NASA's engineers? Well, they're busy designing the Orion spacecraft, which will be similar to the Apollo spacecraft. And it will also have a similar mission, to fly to the moon. They're also going back to a similar heat-resistant material, one that will only have to endure the re-entry process just once. The Orion spacecraft is going back to an ablative-type material, and probably in combination with some reinforced carbon-carbon or some composite materials. Again, they're trying to develop new technology to help overcome these design problems. The moon isn't the only target for Orion. Looking even further ahead, NASA hopes to travel to Mars. But that's another story to be told. Visit www.nasa.gov for more information and search for the shuttle under Space Operations. <laughs>